Chapter 10. Was it all a dream? Anastasia woke up yet again in Phoenix's bed, the moonlight coming through the windows now. Phoenix was sitting in an armchair by the fireplace, reading a book as the logs cackled. Rachel sat on the floor beside his chair, sipping a cup of tea, watching the flames dance. Anastasia glanced back over to the wooden cabinet, all of its swords now back in their places. The breakfast tray had been replaced by a dinner tray with a slice of red cake for dessert. Slipping out of bed, she walked over to Phoenix's chair and leaned on the back of it, gazing into the flames. Phoenix raised his head from reading. Feeling rested now? Um, you did get cut in half, right? That wasn't just a dream, was it? No, I did. You're still alive, though. Phoenix and Rachel laughed lightly <laughs> together. Rachel then replied, still laughing, her voice not as threatening as it had been. It takes more than a mere flesh wound to kill him, darling. Believe me. Standing up, Phoenix closed the book and folded his wings into his back. He then seemed to fade out of sight. Soon after, he reappeared behind Anastasia, leaning against her back, looking at the wall opposite the fireplace into one of the paintings. Anastasia stopped herself from asking him how he did that, realizing it had to be stupid since his answer had always been the same. Setting her cup down, Rachel stood up, walking over to the large cabinet. The heels of her shoes clicked on the stone floor as she stopped in front of its doors, taking out a key. Phoenix's weight on Anastasia's back wasn't uncomfortable, but it still wasn't something she was used to. She could feel each breath he took in and exhaled. There was a click from the lock as the cabinet doors opened with a creak. A swishing noise took hold of the silence. Phoenix lifted his arm quickly, catching one of the swords from the cabinet. Anastasia knew that if he were a second slower, it would have seriously injured her. But this didn't faze her. Who painted these paintings you have on the walls? Anastasia asked. I did. Most, if not all, are based on my memories and dreams. Some have a person in the distance. Who is it? A dream, a desire, a wish of mine. Anastasia could feel his breathing become slow and deep. She figured it was his love in the paintings. A painful subject for him, so she let it stand at that. The pressure from his body was lifted as he walked over, viewing the painting closer. Resting the sword's blade on his shoulder, he changed the subject. So, do you know how to use a blade? No, not yet. I've wanted to learn how to, but it was frowned upon there, thought to be a method of killing used by a fallen phoenix. It's a form of art, a balance of both mind and body. You will start training with Rachel tomorrow morning. But I don't have a sword. You can have this one. Turning back to Anastasia, Phoenix tossed her the sword. It was well crafted with an even balance. The handle was wrapped in red leather, giving the user a firm grip. The blade was mainly black, but with red inlays throughout its design. The hilt was beautiful crafted to look like fire reaching out from the user's hand. Phoenix looked back into the flames of the fire for a few seconds before walking out of the room into the darkness of the living room. Rachel locked the cabinet back, putting the key in her dress pocket, walking toward the door. Rachel, can I talk to you for just a few minutes? Sure. Rachel walked over to the black rose table and sat on the glass. Anastasia leaned the sword against the armchair before sitting in it. How long have you known Phoenix? About ten years now. Of course, it feels longer than that with all we've been through. Do you mind if I ask you a personal question? No. Oh, and I'd like to apologize for my behavior earlier. Don't worry about it. I've been treated worse. Now my question is, do you love him? 
It's hard to love someone that doesn't love you back. Because they still love someone from a past life, you know? <sighs> I wish I did. My age is at a disadvantage at times. My turn to ask a personal question. How old am I? Yeah. I'm 4,539 years old. You must be what they call a new breed. Ugh, I really don't like being called that. Oh, sorry. I didn't know. It's okay. They're just words, right? They aren't just words when they make someone feel bad or belittled. So, how old is Phoenix? Do you know? I think he told me he was over 8,000 years old. But he wasn't completely sure. 8,000? Really? He doesn't look like it. <laughs> he looks like he could be around my age. It's due to his genetic structure. And because of that, he could be older. There's really no way of knowing. Anastasia glanced back over to the painting Phoenix looked at earlier. So the person in his paintings is his lost love? Yeah. He never paints her up close, or if he does, I haven't seen one. She's always painted from afar. I think he feels like he can't reach her. Has he told you what she looks like? No. I don't ask. It's painful enough for him to have to relive her death every night anyway. Oh, that would drive me crazy. How does he handle it? Black Rose Petal Tea helps, but he's not dependent on it. He also paints and writes poetry. Have you read some of it? Yeah. The ones he lets me read sometimes bring me to tears. They're littered with so much pain. I found a couple that he's left out by mistake that really make me wish I could take the pain away from him, even just for an hour. No matter how he acts, or how he says he feels, I know it's just a mask he wears for my benefit. Inside, he's in real pain. Phoenix popped his head in the door, removing his toothbrush from his mouth. Alright ladies, time for bed. We've got a big day ahead of us. He continued to brush his teeth, walking away from the door. Anastasia whispered to Rachel. Do you think he heard us talking about him? I don't have to think. I know he did. And whispering won't help. He can hear extremely well. Uh, what can't he do? Well, I don't think he can tie a bow tie. He can tie a regular tie, but not a bow tie. Anastasia <laughs> giggled as Rachel stood back up, stretching her arms. Well, I'm a turn in for the night. You get some rest too. I'm really gonna work your muscles tomorrow. All right, have a good sleep then, Rachel. You too. Night, Phoenix. Rachel said very softly, smiling at Anastasia. Night, Rachel. Anastasia. Anastasia smiled lightly. The bed felt empty to Anastasia that night, as she lay staring at the canopy top. The low cackle of the dying fire kept the room from becoming completely silent. Sleep didn't come to her, no matter how hard she tried. Her mind was too busy thinking. The left side of the bed suddenly dipped down as someone had just laid down next to her. The partial silence was broken by Phoenix's voice. Can't sleep either, huh? No. You? I try not to. The dreams? Yeah. I can't seem to get my thoughts to stop long enough to sleep. Try having a cup of black rose bell tea before bed next time. Does it really work that well? Yeah, Rachel swears by it. <laughs> Got tired of sleeping on the sofa? I don't know. I think Rachel is coming around me being here. She might let me bunk in her room, so you can have yours back. It's okay. It doesn't matter where I sleep. I just wake up in the middle of the night anyway. Do you think you'll ever find someone? A bold question there. Sorry. No, it's okay. I suppose I'll have to stop living in the past one of these days. It's just the dreams don't make it any easier. Phoenix grew quiet after that. A few minutes passed when Anastasia noticed his breathing was slow and deep. She spoke in a soft voice. Phoenix, are you still awake? He didn't respond to her question. She figured he had fallen asleep. She laid next to him, wondering if he had found peace in his dreams or not. Her eyes drooped and she too was within sleep.